insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Your hosts, Joseph and Michelle Whalen, a husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics, are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment. This is episode 39 lies and allegations i'm your host joseph whalen and my haunting and beautiful co-host <laughs> michelle whalen hi everyone how are you doing today sweetie i'm good how are you darling i'm doing good so as you can tell from some of our set dressing today we are doing our halloween special although I'm, really do, do we have any any stories that are actually specific to halloween Mm, probably not. Well, no. my insightful Your picks. Your insightful pick. Yeah, we'll give you that. So anyway, yeah. we're just um, uh, noting our Halloween special. <laughs> right, we right. Had to, we had, did have to do a quick set change here. Right, I did have to add a couple of things. And, and this is obviously something that we've talked about doing in maybe our, our uh, 40th uh, episode, kind of to highlight our... Um, collectibles right. that we we have um and you know obviously if you've been listening and watching our podcast you know that i am a huge haunted mansion uh fan i would have never guessed would have never guessed by the shirt the ears the other stuff um where this time of year it kind of looks like our living room is decorated for the holiday right but if you see our living room in february it looks exactly the same. So right. depending on, on when you come over to, to visit us, you know, uh, you know, the, the big joke was years ago, we had a, a, you know, food delivery person come and it was probably September and, you know, I was like, Oh wow, you guys are decorating for, for Halloween. And I'm like, yeah, it's like this all year long. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so creeps out some of the the neighborhood kids when they you know come over to to play but i think now everybody just kind of knows that that's where those, you know where those weird where those the parents yeah. and then of course if they go downstairs into our basement then that's when the whole star wars realm you that's know true. takes over so yes that'll definitely be a future episode where we'll do some pictures and some video uh Absolutely. of our house to to show you the obsession that we we have but uh, today we're doing lies and allegations so in our disney detective segment we're going to be talking about some uh, allegations by jeremy renner's wife that may wind up resulting in him losing the role as hawkeye then we'll talk about how uh, ewan mcgregor has been lying to us <laughs> about uh the new star wars obi-wan series that is uh forthcoming uh, Mark Hamill uh, is in the news as well. Uh, summing up uh, Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker trailer in one word. Then in our entertainment news, um, Francis Ford Coppola is now uh, jumping into Martin Scorsese's corner uh, in their uh, dislike of Marvel superhero movies. So that's a story that should have died weeks ago that keeps going on. But not to take away from that, we also have John Favreau throwing his hat into the ring, who mm -hmm. is a director of uh, Marvel superhero movies, uh, giving us his two cents. Uh, then we will talk about Nickelodeon Universe, the largest indoor theme park in North America, opening in our home state, actually, this week. Uh, then we'll talk about the trailer for the Walking Dead spinoff. Uh, surprisingly, not sure how it did make it in here, but the... Rise of Sky, latest Rise of Skywalker trailer did not make it into the, the news here other than Mark Hamill's take on it, though. But that's kind of a good thing because given our last uh, <laughs> interactions with Disney. Right. Well, I figured we would talk about it, it with his article and. Well, you know. and, and just an update mm -hmm. um, for our listeners. A few weeks ago, we had done um, 
Jungle Cruise. Jungle Cruise. We had done right. Jungle Cruise. Uh, Where we didn't show trailer. the trailer. Well, we did show the we trailer. We showed some of it in the background. We didn't highlight. Well, no. The original video actually oh. had the trailer. Mm-hmm. Didn't have the audio. Wasn't mm-hmm. the full trailer. And we were given a takedown order from Disney Enterprises, mm-hmm. which I then disputed based on fair use practices and wound up having to put out a revised version of the podcast right. that didn't show the video. And uh, Disney released their claim. Mm-hmm. So we got the green light to show that if we want. But given the extra work I had to go through and the trouble I had to go through, uh, I refused to show any more Disney um trailers on the podcast anymore (laughs) right so So anyway busy schedule today big show let's get down to it okay go for disney detective i think i should be in the cantina that's Mm. that 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 music (laughs) is is at the end of the show we'll talk about that that's a that's a teaser for you guys, what that is. Exactly. Um, so in our Disney detectives, uh, Jeremy Renner is uh, reportedly may lose his Hawkeye role over his ex-wife's allegations. Freaking Hawkeye. Um, and this is something, there's been a couple of different articles that, that came out about this. Um, so last week, his ex-wife accused the Avengers Endgame actor of threatening to kill her putting a gun in his mouth, doing cocaine and other controlled substances, and using a firearm with his daughter in the room. Let me stop you there for a second. He threatened to kill her by putting a gun in his mouth. Yeah, I guess. Was she standing behind him or something? I I don't know. I wasn't there. Okay. I wasn't there. Um, So the couple who got married in 2014 actually ended up getting divorced a, a year later. And I remember... You know, back when, you know, they had gotten divorced, but now all of these allegations ha- have been uh, coming to light. Uh, so now, according to a tweet from Industry Insider, uh, Daniel uh, Richmond at Marvel Studios, that Marvel Studios is reportedly considering their options when it comes to the future of Hawkeye following the ex-wife's troubled al- uh, al- accusations. Uh, pre- previous rumors uh, had indicated that you know, obviously his character was going to be training, you know, his daughter and, you know, that he was going to be basically taking, you know, a back seat. And now they're thinking that they might even kind of jump a little bit ahead of that and not even, you know, bring him forward. Uh, there was another article that I saw today, actually, where Twitter was kind of all over the place with um, actually fans saying that they didn't want to see him uh anymore in anything um because of all of these these allegations right. from from years ago um so obviously we have the hawkeye series that is set to be on disney plus uh during the fall of 2021 but in addition to that you know we're not sure what else you know we might see him in because i guess he was gonna have a you know a role in some of the other marvel universe shows on disney plus so as of right now it's kind of uh up in the air you know what's going to happen with him because of this well and the thing that bothers me with this is these are just allegations Mm -hmm. right now no charges have been filed right no uh investigation has been completed into this uh this was a a highly contentious divorce uh between himself Mm -hmm. and his wife there so in in situations like that um a lot of untruths and mm-hmm. half truths come right. out of it right uh and for him to be tried in a court of public opinion like this right and for disney to even be considering removing him now is is really unfair mm-hmm. like if let let him have his trial exactly, and see what let happens him have his day in court right and if he's convicted then by all then means do what you think you need to do but don't i guess they're trying career. to do crowd control you know like but what, you happen, know. what happens if it turns out that it's nothing oh then? yeah then, then they ruin this man's then, career at right. that point and, and how, how do you recover from and that? how many people has that happened to before exactly you know so exactly yeah so we'll we'll obviously be you know looking into to that so so how is you and mcgregor being lying to us? <laughs> so basically his he's been lying because ever since the release of star wars return of the sith uh, Revenge of the Sith, I'm sorry, not Return of the Sith. That's a whole different movie. Um, he kind of knew something was brewing with his character, and he had been in talks with various things once Disney uh, purchased Lucas Films. 
And so he knew that there was something coming for Obi-Wan, but basically whenever anybody asked him about it, he basically was lying in that respect, saying, I don't know anything about this. I don't know when he really did, you know, know for the past four years that there was something brewing right. for um, Obi-Wan, obviously. Um, so now, you know, now they actually, you know, people get to see what happened with Obi-Wan in the new Disney Plus series. Um, so he's basically offering, you know, some some little details. Um, he actually said, it's an effing massive relief because for four years I've been having to lie to people about it. Um, he told the Men's Journal. Uh, the series will reportedly consist of six hour-long episodes, meaning that McGregor's next adventure as Obi-Wan will certainly be substantial, but other than that, he's not allowed to tell you anything. Um, the storyline basically sits between episode three and episode four, um, and he explained that this is when the Jedi Order is falling apart, and it'll be, you know, interesting to take the character that we know and actually show him, you know, his arc... And basically, you know, see how he went from his version of Obi-Wan to Alec, you know, um, Guinness. Guinness's version to kind of, you know, become that that older, wiser. Do they um, do they explain how in, he inexplicably aged 40 <laughs> years over a 15, 16 year period? No, that'll probably be, you know, something that they'll they'll go into um, later. I, I would love to get an explanation for that. <laughs> um, and obviously, you know, there had been different talks that there's a chance that uh, Joel uh, Egerton might be returning as well uh, to play Uncle Owen. And he had been Uncle Owen in the movies, yep. so there's a chance that he might come in and see, you know, some interaction, well, that would be um, cool. you know, to kind of to kind of do that. Um, so, and what was funny was that um, that Egerton had actually said, you know, there's a real possibility. Uh, he was actually on uh, a different podcast talking about it. He goes, but there's possibly an assassin on the rooftop just outside the window if I say anything wrong. So I don't want to say anything. I'm just not going to do it, you know. So so it's kind of cool that, um, you know, it, it looks like that's definitely going to be a, an interesting uh, series. Well, it'll be cool to see how it unfolds because in the... Uh, I don't know if it, some of it's expanded universe, some of it was canon, but right. there was a couple of Obi Wan novels that came mm -hmm. out that that tried to explore his story a little bit further, and they were kind of cool. They they did some stuff in the mm -hmm. comics, and the comics were kind of cool. So if they could blend some of that stuff together and sort of explain what he's been doing out there in the middle of the desert for the last you know eighteen years since Luke was born, right, right, that would be kind of cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's talk about Mark Hamill. More Star Wars. More Star Wars stuff. So Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker's final trailer is obviously out now if you haven't seen it. Uh, and it has obviously given Star Wars fandom a major shot in the arm when it comes to generating buzz and hype around uh, the episode's release. Uh, the Rise of Skywalker dominated the trending section of various social media platforms after debuting on Monday Night Football and inspiring several key figures from the Star Wars franchise to weigh in, obviously Luke included. Um, um, so after seeing the trailer, he basically summed it up with one word, always. Now, if you don't understand what that means, you have to actually watch the trailer yep. and to give you a description of it, um, that the reference obviously is only if you watch the through in the final scene of the trailer, you see the Star Wars sequel trilogy star Ray is facing what seems to be a reincarnation of em uh, Emperor Palpatine. And then we cut to a shot of Ray holding her blue lightsaber, staring at something that you can't see off screen. And as Ray is looking into an all important something, two voiceovers are heard. One of them being Hamill's Luke Skywalker force ghost saying the force will be with you. While in a second voice, Carrie Fisher's Leia says always. And I know when I saw it, it gave me 
yep. chills too. Even though there were a couple of scenes of the trailer where you actually got to see her, yeah. but yeah. it was kind of like just hearing her say that. Um, so from that one word, Fisher is very um, significant for various reasons. It hints that she did indeed die and maybe became a force ghost at some point during the movie, unless some classic J.J. Abrams misdirection, like, oh, I'm going to f- f- uh, f- uh, fake you out. Um, it's also the last word from Carrie Fisher. Um, it's possibly the last word from Carrie Fisher in the Star Wars franchise, which signifies a much larger sense in which the late actress will forever be kept alive uh, thanks to Star Wars. Um, also, the trailer happened to be released on what would have been her birthday. Um, and, you know, so, you know, having him highlight that part of it just kind of made like a, a poignant birthday tribute. Um, so all in all, it you know, it, it, it was a great trailer. You know, I honestly, I didn't want to watch it. I, I, nope, and I forced you to. <laughs> I'm always like, no, no, I, I want to be surprised. I want to be surprised. And it was funny because even when there were a couple of us at work, you know, a couple of days later talking about it, we talked about all the different trailers. And that's the one thing that Star Wars has always been known for is awesome trailers where it doesn't tell you anything anything (laughs) you know and it's so funny how you look on youtube now and you see you know hundreds of different you know speculations about okay well this is what we saw this is what this means and you know i'm gonna do this and this and this and 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 this becomes this and this you know to to try and break down what what is actually in it so that's why i didn't want to see it you were like no you got to see it and like i bawled my eyes out halfway through it and and i made you watch the trailer not the breakdowns right um, but the one thing that I thought was really interesting about about this, the significance of Leia, mm-hmm. and based on everything that I've read, she plays a very significant role in this movie, mm-hmm. and she has a number of scenes in the movie, right? All of which were shot prior to her death, right? This was all stock footage that, that they, they had, had from other movies, from Force Awakens mm-hmm. and from Last Jedi, right? That J.J. Abrams was able to go back and use all of that so that she had this key role that he right. had originally envisioned when he did Force Awakens. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it'll be very interesting to see how he pulls it off. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I was already excited to see it, seeing the trailer. You know, obviously the fangirl in me, you know is more excited and yep. yes we already have our tickets bought yes, you know we do. as well so. so so that's it for Disney Detective Yes that's it for our Star, Star Wars Marvel Detectives <laughs> <laughs> We will move on with our entertainment news of the week Mhm So we're still fighting with with Martin Scorsese, and he's getting some help here. Yeah, so, you know, obviously we've talked about this for a couple of weeks now, where now Francis Ford Coppola is backing Martin Scorsese's critique of Marvel superhero movies. Uh, So Coppola received some angry um, comments, you know, uh, after, you know, Martin Scorsese, you know, said things about, you know, the Marvel superhero movies basically being uh, like going to an amusement park. And he basically said that he feels that the Marvel superhero movie superhero movies are despicable. Um, and then I was thinking, well, wait, isn't that another kids movie? Despicable right, me and everything. Right. But not uh, Disney. <laughs> right. Um, so, you know, so basically he came to the defense of Martin Scorsese by agreeing. Um, and obviously, as we, as we had mentioned, you know, Martin Scorsese had said that he doesn't see them. He tried, but it's just not cinema to him blah 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 it's like going to a theme park um if there aren't organized crime members involved it just doesn't sit right and then you know and then coppola basically said well when martin scorsese says that marvel pictures are not cinema he's right because we expect to learn something from cinema we expect to gain something some enlightenment some knowledge some inspiration um coppola had said this while talking to a journalist uh in france uh he says i don't know that anyone gets anything out of seeing the same movie over and over again. Martin was kind of kind when he said it's not cinema. He didn't say it's despicable, which I just said it is. So, 
<laughs> okay. So Dim's this, fighting words. So, okay. And then, obviously, James Gunn came, you know, back to Twitter, um, basically to argue that, you know, Scorsese and Coppola were basically repeating the same line of criticism that older generations gave them when they were the younger, you know, bright lights of, of Hollywood. Uh, he noted that gangster movies, which have been closely associated with Coppola and Scorsese, were once called despicable by our grandfathers, who also regarded uh, the films of uh, John Ford as exactly the same. He said um, that I remember, um, and this was... <coughs> Uh, this was James Gunn basically saying, I remember my great uncle who I was raving about Star Wars, and he responded by saying, I saw it when it was called 2001, and boy, it was boring. Uh, he said that superheroes are simply today's gangster cowboy outer space adventures. Some superhero films are awful and some are beautiful, like westerns and gangster movies before that. Just movies, and not everybody will appreciate them, even some geniuses, and that's okay. You know, so, you know, James Gunn had a point. It was okay. Absolutely. Uh, you know, back in the day, every other movie was a gangster mobster movie. And yep. that was all you, you know, you saw. And then let's even take it, you know, a couple of generations before that. Everything was a Western. Look at who, you know, who the stars were. You had John Wayne and, and you know, all of the stars of, of that era. And it was all, you know, the spaghetti Westerns. That was a whole. Well, and the whole <coughs> take on how Coppola actually defines what a movie should be mm -hmm. is subjective. It's his definition. Mm -hmm. right. I go to the movies to right. escape. Right. So if I can sit in a movie theater for two hours and not think about all the other stuff that I'm dealing with in the right. world, right. then that movie has done its job. Right. I don't want to necessarily go to that 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 movie and watch a, de a fictional depiction of all the things that happen in the world today. Right. Because right. I can want turn the news on and see how many people and got there, killed in right. the city. And there are know? some people that do appreciate more of the real life drama that they don't like the make-believe and that's right. fine and, and it's that's all subjective and it's all subjective and that's why you have all these different types of movies out there you know that some people are are only into rom-coms and some are only into musicals and some are only into horror and, and you have all these genres that are out there for you to choose and pick but to basically come and attack and say you know, I don't know how people watch these over and over. I'm thinking, well, I'm sorry, but once I saw, you know, Godfather, I didn't need to see it again. I didn't or, need or Godfather two or Godfather. <laughs> oh, Godfather three. three. Let's let's not even talk about yeah. Godfather three. I actually had to see that for you know a, an English class so in high you, school. Once you've seen you know? Godfather, you've seen Godfather two, three. Goodfellas and every other mafia movie that's right. out Casino. there. Casino, you know. Let's let's They're go through the list. The They're same. literally all, you know, especially the when same. you reuse the same actors. Right, exactly. You know, so yes, so for the Marvel ones, you are reusing the same actors because but you're reusing playing the same characters. Exactly, you're playing the same There's character. There's consistency. You. You, exactly. You have a connection to the characters right. at that point in time. Right. You're not sticking Joe Pesci in five different mobsters <laughs> right. playing Joe Pesci. Right. And I hate to tell you, but probably more people got teary-eyed and emotional at the end of Endgame than they did at any of the Godfather Absolutely. movies. So to Absolutely. tell me that there's no emotion and that there's no feeling or... And that's, like we said last time, right. that's ten years of movies. Right. With different characters, mm -hmm. different actors, different casts that you can pull together over the course of mm -hmm. 10 years, yep. stick them all in one movie 10 years later and still have cohesion mm -hmm. and still draw the fans into a yep. movie that they want to see. Yep. That's an outstanding accomplishment. And and what's the highest grossing movie of, of all time? Well, that's not Is a measure it? of... Right. Know, we can't measure by that. Okay. That's, that's not relevant. Okay. Did you learn anything, though? <laughs> Yes, I learned that Captain America can pick, can pick up Mjolnir, okay? <laughs> he, he can pick up Mew Mew. <laughs> that's what I learned. And he and Peggy got back together again. Exactly. And that's all that I care about. It was a true love story. Exactly. So to kind of, you know, end cap this a little bit. So John Favreau actually came out you know, about the comments that Martin Scorsese and Francis Ford Coppola had said. Um, now, obviously, if you don't know who he is, you, you're not part of the Marvel <laughs> universe. Oh, clearly. So 
he is or the Star Wars um, universe. right uh, actor director and staple in the Marvel Cinematic Universe and he basically addressed the criticism and said you know what these two guys are my heroes and they've learned the right and they've earned the right to express their opinion I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing if they didn't carve the way they've served as a source of inspiration you can go all the way back to swingers where I was referencing Marty and I've worked with him for me they can express whatever opinion they like Favreau who directed and starred uh, in the first Marvel produced film Iron Man has been consistently present in the MCU since 2008 as executive producer and actor he was involved in all four Avenger films uh, additionally, he starred in both Superman, uh, Homecoming, uh, sorry, Superman, Spider-Man, <laughs> oh my god! Wow. <laughs> Woo, you think I'm tired? Spider-Man, Homecoming, and Spider-Man Far From Home, and obviously he is currently working, or finished up, the Mandalorian, which is part of the Star Wars universe that will be premiering on November 12th on Disney+. Plus. So he's definitely in it so it was kind of nice of him to be like you know what it, it almost came across as let the cranky old men bitch you know we right. know what we're doing we have fans well, we're not really is, worried they are about entitled it entitled to their opinion but oh, their opinion is, is hardly representative of the populace because right. if it was avengers endgame would not be the number one grossing movie of all time wait but that's not a <laughs> right so <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, the fans have voted with their wallet right. as to what they think is a great right. movie. Let's see when, you know, The Irishman, which is Martin Scorsese's newest... Next mafia movie. You know... Because we haven't had a good mafia movie in, what, a year or two? Right. Let, let's let see how well that does <clears throat> and then compare it to, you know, just one Marvel well, being, movie. You don't even need I to... of Irish descent myself, I have to say I'm offended that he's depicting Irish people as criminals. <laughs> And we'll have a whole podcast on that, I'm sure. <laughs> of course we will. So we also have news about the largest indoor theme park in North America, and it's not a Disney attraction. I know, right? That. So Nickelodeon Universe, which at 8.5 acres will be the largest indoor theme park in North America, actually opened on October 25th at the American Dream Mall, which is in East Rutherford, East Rutherford, New Jersey, up in uh, North Jersey, for those of you that are directionally challenged with our, our state. Southern New York, basically. <laughs> Southern New York. It's near Giant Stadium. It's, it's, it's in New Jersey where it's all the New, New York teams play. <laughs> right, basically. <laughs> So the park features more than 35 rides, roller coasters, and attractions. Nickelodeon characters such as SpongeBob, Dora the Explorer, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles will all be at the mall to meet. Um, the roller coaster, um, the roller coasters include one named Shell Razor, uh, which features a plummeting 122 foot drop. Needless to say, I would not be going. That's pretty on that. impressive for an indoor. For an indoor, yeah. Coaster. So, since no Nickelodeon attraction would be complete without slime, visitors can enjoy entertainment on the Nickelodeon slime stage. Uh, prices right now, uh, it seems to be kind of unclear what they are, uh, but it um, the article talked about a general price ticket being thirty nine ninety nine, and that there was some sort of all access ticket for forty nine ninety nine. So basically literally a <clears throat> fraction of what Disney charges. Oh, absolutely. But also a fraction of the amount of attractions too and the amount of space. And I'm sure, you know, a lot of, you know, even though it's 35 rides from, you know, the one picture I saw, it was like little, you know, um, uh, carnival type. Right, right. You know, so, you know, so I think it's Which in between. largely what most of Disney stuff is too. It's just in an indoor building. Well, yeah, some of it. I think it kind of like, for any of you that, that are uh, familiar with Storybook Land, which is a very old family run um, theme park, amusement park down uh, near the Atlantic City Dutch area. Wonderland, sort of Dutch Wonderland thing. is the same kind of thing. So it kind of seems like it's a, it's more of a mix of that with a couple of little bigger, obviously with you know some some roller coasters. Um, so obviously, besides the Nickelodeon universe. Uh, American Dreams NHL regulation size ice rink will also be opening. Um, 
at the same time um, that will feature open skating, figure skating, and hockey tournaments. Uh, in November, the DreamWorks Water Park is set to open at the mall, featuring more than 40 water slides and 15 attractions. Um Now, for those of you that might not be familiar with it, the American Dream Mall has actually been in the works for 16 years. And after false starts and multiple developers, it actually finally got its opening. Well, actually, even before that, I was was going to say because it was Xanadu before. Right. And even then it was supposed to be something else. Early 90s, they started the. Yeah. So it's been been a while that this has been going on. Um, So the mall is approximately three million square feet, roughly dividing 55 percent of entertainment entertainment and 45% retail space. So a good portion of it is, you know, all this entertainment, you know, stuff that they they did. Um, So the retail portion of the mall is scheduled to open in March of 2020. um, And the, you know, the funny thing, if you know, you're not familiar with it, that it'll only be open for six days a week because of New Jersey's blue laws, which are still in place in Bergen County, where the mall is actually located. Um, and for those of you that don't know, blue laws in Bergen County make it illegal to operate most non-food retail on a Sunday and have been in place since the 1600s. So <laughs> thanks to outdated New Jersey law, you can't buy a car or go to the amusement park in Bergen County on a on Sunday. On a Sunday, which kind of – I'm surprised that, you know, they didn't do something else because of that. Cause that's, I, I'm sure they tried, but they probably didn't I'm, buy enough yeah. politicians for it. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, so it's – um, you know, not too far from, you know, um, New York City. So they're hoping to get people coming in by train for that. They obviously have a huge parking area, you know, to accommodate as well. So it'll be interesting to, to hear how how it does. And, you know, maybe we'll actually take a trip up there since our daughter is very much into SpongeBob. You know, it well, might be a, to, a fun little day trip. Not to sound like a cranky old man, but... <laughs> It's nice to see them start finally bringing in some tax revenue because the state of New Jersey's poured millions and millions mm-hmm. of dollars oh, yeah. Yeah. into developing that land and saw no return come out of it whatsoever. They've had three or four developers right, pull out right. of that project already yeah. after taking government subsidies. Yeah. So should be interesting. Mm-hmm. So the last thing that we have today is a Walking Dead story. Right. So this actually, this news story popped up uh, today that they actually released a trailer for the Walking Dead spinoff that we actually talked about probably a couple of months ago when they announced that they were doing this, you know, kind of, you know, second spinoff of the show. Um, And as of right now, the show still doesn't have a name. Um, but basically they're, they're, you know, using it as the second spinoff. Um, so this one does have a different look to it than Fear the Walking Dead, because Fear the Walking Dead and the original Walking Dead do kind of mirror each other in, in certain respects, because it's, it's from when, you know, the start of everything happened and, and whatnot, where this one <clears throat> basically takes place 10 years after the apocalypse happens. And the focus is around a bunch of of teens that are part of this group. Um, So basically what happens is that you find out that there's this walled-in city where over 9,000 residents live. Um, It's basically set out in in the Midwest, and the community has basically created this safe haven and a fortress where life isn't just about surviving anymore. And they don't call them zombies, they call them empties instead of uh, walkers, which is what most of the other uh, shows. Um, So, so, you know, it's, they don't know about any of the other groups because they, they're basically been walled in for, you know, this 10 year period. Um, you know, when you, when you look at the trailer, you know, they're in a, it, it almost looks like they're at like a university possibly that they basically took over the university and kind of walled it in. So everything is very clean. Um, it seems like they have power, electricity. It's the kinder, gentler version of walking. Yeah, it, it's almost like what, you know, what they wanted, you know, all the different uh, communities like Alexandria to be or something where, you know, we're, we're self-sustaining. And basically the, the teens on the show are like, 
what's really out there? You know, are we really safe? And and you kind of get a hint um, from the one the one uh, teenager that her dad kind of went with others on like a scouting mission and that they haven't been back in, in years or something. So it's like, do you ever wonder what's outside of the wall type that thing? That sounds like, oh, my dad went down to get lottery tickets and never came back. <laughs> never came back. So, you know, it looks like there's a group of them that decide – you know, let's go out and see because they've never fought any of them. They've basically kind of gone to school every day and, and just kind of had a, a normal. Years? That's a long university. <laughs> well, no, because a lot of these kids were like, you know, five when they came in. So they're right. still, you know, um, you know, so it, it was interesting. It definitely had a, a, a more interesting feel than Fear the Walking Dead for me. I only watched like the first season and a half of Fear the Walking Dead and then I kind of lost interest. And I know there are people that actually like it better than Walking Dead. And I know a lot of people that, you know, were Walking Dead fans from the beginning and then kind of died off because of... <laughs> died off. <Get laughs> that, was it? that was good. Yeah, that was funny. Um, that, you know, kind of left the show when it got a little too gruesome and a little too boring, you know. So unfortunately, even though the show seems to be doing well, you know, it is kind of lacking in, in the... Um, the ratings right now. So it almost sounds like the way they're going to do this is um, the second spinoff is supposed to debut in spring of 2020. Um, and usually that's when Walking Dead ends. And for those of you that know, Fear the Walking Dead is during the summer. So it kind of sounds like between the three shows, there'll be some sort of Walking Dead you know, all year long on, on AMC. So, so the seasonal walking dead. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's depending nice. on, you know, which walking dead, but again, they're going to be at that 10 year mark already, which is pretty much where walking dead already is. Cause it's been 10 seasons and then fear the walking dead kind of, I well, think walking dead also did that time jump too. Right. Right. So, you know, who knows where, you know, you are with, you know, with the, the timeline of everything. So, right. All right, so that is it for our entertainment news mm -hmm. this week. We'll be back with our insightful picks. To you, my dear, for your pick. So I have actually two quick kind of picks. Uh, sticking with the holiday theme of Halloween, um, there was one article uh, that MGM has actually been uploading full episodes of the original Adams Family to YouTube. Um, so with the brand new animated movie that is now out in theaters, um, now it's a chance for you, if you've never watched the original Adams Family series, to find them on YouTube. Um, the Adams Family television series, which brought Charles Adams' drawings to life, to live action for two seasons between 1964 and 1965, uh, 66 are now available. Um, you can actually own the entire series for $20 or you can actually stream select episodes for free on YouTube. Um, I actually ended up watching a, a couple of them uh, today and they're about 25 minutes long, um, you know, no commercials and everything. But Don Rickles was in, you know, he was a guest star on, on the one episode that I saw. Um, I always loved, you know, watching them. So, you know, to, to be able to just, you know, watch and they had they had a fair amount of them. I want to say they were maybe at, l at least 20 of them that were available and it looked like they were all uh just released just the other day so i don't know how long they'll be around but if you happen to be a fan a nice little themed uh show to to watch um the other little halloween uh ep um article that i saw was actually uh stephen king uh talked to uh entertainment weekly and recommend uh, recommended a couple of TV shows, uh, a TV show, a movie, and a book that you should check out for Halloween. Uh, so first is actually the Child's Play remake. Um, he actually was quoted and said, I didn't go and see it in the theaters because I thought, well, it's just another, you know, warmed over, you know, sequel. Um, he said, Mark Hamill does the voice of Chucky and he freaking loved it. He said, I laughed, I cried at things. Everybody who was in the movie just did a terrific job. It's a smart script and it's a load of fun. It really is. And it's gruesome as hell. Um, so if that's your type of movie and, you know, you hadn't seen it, obviously Stephen King, the king of, you know, horror, he recommends it. 
Uh, for TV shows, there's a show on Netflix called Marianne, um, and it's a French series, and it's very, very scary. Uh, he said there's something in there, you know, that's kind of reminds you of Stranger Things. So it has that kind of vibe and also a very Stephen King vibe as well. Um, so I'm actually interested to to watch that. I'm finishing up something else right now, and then that's definitely going to be something uh, on my list. And lastly, uh, his book recommendation was called Ninth house and he said it's a wonderful book called ninth house and it's like harry potter but for grown-ups uh that's the kind of book that you read and you say to yourself oh my god it's scary it's smart it's imaginative and hope that there'll be more so okay those are stephen king's picks for halloween themed uh entertainment very cool good picks thank you we'll be back with uh my unusual pick this week <laughs> So this week, my pick is something that we've been listening to in the background throughout the podcast. <laughs> um, this was actually a uh, anniversary gift. Because from, our anniversary gift, our anniversary, anniversary is... On Halloween. So it's themed. Uh, so that's, it's my gift from, my, from the best wife in the world. That's me. Uh, if anyone has ever heard of Arcade 1-Up, they make... Uh, Classic arcade cabinets uh, with the original controllers and everything. They're smaller versions, um, but the one that uh, my loving wife purchased for me was the arcade one-up Star Wars home game. Uh, the uh, the Star Wars home arcade game features the artwork from the original arcade machine on the cabinet and the included riser. Uh, just over five feet tall with the riser uh, comes with a light up marquee, a full color, 17 inch full color. It's <laughs> as full color. It's, as. A, it's an early eighties game. So it's about four colors. <laughs> right. For most wait, of the game. One, two, three, um, four, five, but yeah, it comes with a full <laughs> color, 17 inch display and dual speakers. These features combine with the real feel flight yoke and control buttons allow for endless hours of, of gaming. The Star Wars home arcade game is easy to assemble. <laughs> uh, it wasn't impossible to assemble, but it was a lot more involved than I thought. And you definitely needed two people to do it. And it's it, not a one-person job. Correct. And it comes with a clear deck protector to protect the artwork where the controller is. Mm -hmm. uh, the Star Wars home arcade game features the original arcade versions of the classic game's Based on Star Wars A New Hope, where you battle to destroy the Death Star. Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back, where you fight on Hoth and you uh, run the asteroid fields and so forth. Uh, and Star Wars Return of the Jedi, where you're fighting on uh, Endor with speeder bikes. You get to fly into the Death Star and blow it up. Uh, but it is all classic arcade fun. Uh, and it is. It, it has a, f a real arcade feel to it. It's, mm -hmm. it's 92 yeah. pounds. Um, it's 20 inches deep, 18, almost 19 inches wide, and 60.8 inches high with the riser. It is um, a one-player game. Uh, and the thing that, that really got me was it has the original flight control mm -hmm. yoke, which yeah. was very unique to the game itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, it even has the light-up marquee on the front with mm -hmm. the classic artwork, um, and it's it really is. It's a it's a beautiful machine. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a fun interface. It's a fun game for the kids to play mm -hmm. and for the adults to play. Uh, and you know, I when we set it up and we fired it up the first time before we even put it where it was going to go, it was like you know my childhood, mm -hmm. you know, was recaptured with it because this right. was the game that I played as a kid and it knocked it out of the park. It mm -hmm. really did. Um, so Star Wars, the arcade one up Star Wars home arcade game available in the U S at GameStop and Walmart retails for around $500. And that was my pick. Did we have anything else? Any afterthoughts or anything? No, I don't think so. Not today. No? All right. Well, you can reach us uh, via email at comments at insightsintothings.com. On Twitter. At insights underscore things. On YouTube at youtube.com slash insights into things. 
on our website at www.insightsintothings.com. Our audio podcast is available at podcast.insightsintothings.com. And on Facebook at facebook.com backslash insight into things podcast. That's it. Another one in the books. Mm -hmm. Have a good week, everyone. Thanks, guys, and have a happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Woo! Wow.